call to order the City of Douglasville City Council regular meeting for tonight. This is a voting meeting. January the 13th, our invocation will be done by Pastor Jean Fields of Heritage Baptist Church. And after that, we'll have the uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the invocation. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Father, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to come before you. Father, it's a double honor to be able to do that in this space and in this room tonight. Father, we don't just come before you, but we invite you in tonight. Father, I just ask your blessings on our city council and our mayor. Father, we thank you that there are people in our community that have a passion to lead and, Father, to, to lead with your wisdom and, Father, with your heart. Father, I ask that uh, you just uh, continue to watch over them. Father, I'm reminded tonight to, to ask your blessings and watchful eye over all of our first responders in our community. Father, we thank you that we do have the opportunity to be here at this time and this place in our community. Father, let us be good stewards of all that you give us. And again, we thank you for the blessing, Father, that it is to be here in this place. Again, Father, we love you in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Miller and Pastor Fields. We appreciate you coming and rendering us the invocation tonight. Um, I will go over the announcements and presentations, but before I do that, I would like to recognize one of our, our former colleagues, Council Member Mayor Pro Tem Richard Siegel in the back. Please raise your hand. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see you. Happy New Year. And so with that being said, I will uh, have a special presentation, and then after that presentation, I will do the protocol for how the meeting will be um, handled and run this evening. So I have a presentation by myself for proclamation and recognition of January the 16th, 2020, as the 100th centennial anniversary of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated to Ms. Dion Hollingsworth Bailey, president of the Douglasville chapter. I will read the proclamation and then ask Ms. Hollingworth, Hollingsworth Bailey to come forward and give remarks and then we'll ask your entire uh, group of sorority sisters to come and receive uh, the proclamation from myself. And the council members will take a picture. So it says, Office of the Mayor, Rochelle Robinson, proclamation. Whereas Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated was founded January 16, 1920 on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. as the sister organization of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated by five co-eds, Arizona Cleaver Stemmons, Pearl Ann Neal, Myrtle Tyler Faithful, Viola Tyler Goodings, or Goings, and Fanny Petit Watts. And whereas these women dared to be more than an organization, it was a movement, a belief system that reflected at its core the desire to provide true service to embark scholarship, to set a standard for sisterly love, and to define the noble concept of finer womanhood and establish a new organization predicated on precepts of scholarship, service, sisterhood, and finer womanhood. And whereas the Phi 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 Pi Zeta chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated was chartered in Douglasville in 2008 and reactivated in 2016, promoting scholarship, academic excellence, partnering with the community on service, cultural, and educational projects. And whereas January 16, 2020 will mark the 100th anniversary of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, so, now therefore, I, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, do hereby acknowledge and celebrate January 16th, 2020 as the centennial anniversary of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, so proclaimed this 13th day of January 2020. Let's give them a hand as Ms. Hollingsworth comes forward. I truly Evening. thank you. On behalf of Phi Pi Zeta Chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, mm -hmm. we thank you for this honor. Yes, ma'am. If you give us your name and address for the record, I didn't do all the protocol before that, but okay. that's typically what we do. So that we'll My have name it. is Dion Hollingsworth Bailey, 
and I am the president of Phi Pi Zeta Chapter. Thank you so much, and please give uh, my regards to uh, Miss Dahlia Racine. I know she was out of town, and she's a person who initiated everything to ask you all to come. She's one of your sorority sisters, but she had a case out of town, so she could not come at this time. Yes, I heard so if you don't mind coming forward, and um, the entire group, come forward. We'll take pictures. Council, please come around with us to take pictures to celebrate this 100th anniversary in your service in the community. You're welcome. Good evening. Well, <laughs> we'll say let's get everybody as tight as we can in there. Yeah, tall people in the back. Councilwoman Danley. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Can y'all tighten up just a little bit over here? There we go. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a bunch because somebody always has their eyes closed. So everybody just smile pretty. All right. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Thank you all so much for, we appreciate you taking that photo to memor uh, have a memorial for this occasion. Even though it's Delta Sigma Theta is really their anniversary. I know Miss Chelsea, it's okay. <laughs> it is the Delta's anniversary, but. I know, it's our Founders Day. <laughs> So I would like to welcome you to the City of Douglasville City Council regular meeting. And um, this is a council meeting where agenda items will officially be, will take action on those items that were discussed last Thursday at our work session. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under, under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates section to discuss your business. Just a few protocol issues, I would ask that you would please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. You receive a warning from the chair if you deviate from this requirement and a second deviation will result in us asking you to leave the chambers for the evening. Only one person speaking at a time. Please do not plot, applaud or React to speakers, speak from the audience, cheer, or carry on a conversation, um, and be disruptive as we're trying to hear the information that we need to make our decisions. We remind you that we only are required to accept public comments on zoning matters, and um, the agenda items will be handled as the following. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item, then that person representing the agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation. Then myself and council members will possibly ask questions to help us make our decision if we, um, or clarify things that we had not gotten an opportunity to do last Thursday. After that, the chairperson will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There will be a maximum of 30 minutes for that um, 
that time, we'll have 30 minutes for those that are in support of the agenda item and 30 minutes for those in opposition. And each person has five minutes to present. And so you only have one opportunity to present. And when you come to the podium, please give your name and address for the record. Tell us whether you're in favor or in opposition of that item. And uh, this is not a debate question and answer format. It's just kind of we'll receive information and then we'll make our decision. The agenda items will go by a little uh, faster than they did at our work session because, of course, this is a voting meeting. So those are, that's the protocol for the evening. And now we will move on with the agenda items as pr printed, excuse me, on the form that was outside. And um, when you come forward, if you would just give your name and address for the record again, fill out that form and hand that form to the city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, to my right, and we'll have that for the record. Okay, so we'll move on now to minutes. They have the minutes of the legislative work session of December the 12th, 2019, and the regular meeting of December 16th, 2019. Open the floor for a motion to approve the minutes. Move to accept the minutes as presented. Thank you, so, thank you so much. It's been properly moved and second. Moved by the Mayor Pro Tem and second by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley to accept the minutes as presented. Do we see any corrections or comments from council members as it relates to the minutes? Any further discussion? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Open the floor for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Council Member uh, Dr. Ber LaShawn Berdan. We have a motion and second. It's been properly moved to approve the consent agenda. Do we see any corrections or comments from council members as it relates to the consent agenda? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We'll move on to item seven, which is Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem, Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Economic Development Committee at this time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. We'll move on to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Madam Mayor, we have no business tonight under finance. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Housing and Community Affairs Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Do we have any business? No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. Madam Mayor, no business tonight, ma'am. So much, Councilman Davis. We'll move on. There is business here under Personnel and Organization Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one okay. item tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, item A, to authorize the mayor to s sign an application and agreement with Toastmasters International for the city to serve as a coordinator for a new local Toastmasters club. And uh, I don't know, do we have any anything to add to this from the other night discussed from it. staff do we have a reporter yeah. miss chelsea no mayor council we don't have anything to add okay uh if we don't have anything uh from the council then i'd like to make this uh make a motion to approve mm -hmm. item 20-001 Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second to approve item 20-001 from the um, committee chair and a second by Councilman Adams. We have any further discussion from council members as it relates to this item. Thank you. Not seeing any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. This item is approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all we have tonight under personnel and organization. Thank you so much, Coach. We'll move on to item 12, which is Planning and Development Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have Welcome. about four items tonight to discuss mm -hmm. uh, under Planning and Development. The first is uh, hold a public hearing and consider a request to amend subsection 11.05 of the Unified Development Ordinance to have preliminary plats to be approved by the Community Development Director to amend section 12.03 to revise review requirements for annexations and development plans and to amend sections 12.06 to revise provisions relating to annexations. Uh, we've had discussion on this item on Thursday. If there's any question or comment, further comment of council or anyone that would uh, like to have 
public statement on it. This is a public hearing, and you'd be given five minutes to speak either for or against this item. Is there any additional information that city staff would provide? Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? For or against, please come forward. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Is there any other question that the uh, staff, I mean, that commit the council or Madam Mayor may have concerning this item? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been probably moved and second. Uh, moved by the chair and second by Council Member uh, Davis to approve um, item 19-125. Any further discussion has already been opened up from the chair. Do we have any last minute concerns from council members? Not seeing any, all those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it unanimously. It's approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Moving on to okay. item B, hold a public hearing and consider a request to amend sections, subsections 2.02 .02 and 2.05 of the Unified Development Ordinance to revise provisions relating to microbreweries and brew pubs, to revise provisions for child care learning centers as accessory uses, and to correct and clarify other references in such ordinance. Uh, does city staff have any additional information on this item? Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against this item? Please come forward. Anyone that would like to speak for or against? Seeing none, we will then close the public hearing on item B. Are there any questions or comments of council or Madam Mayor? No, sir. Seeing none, then I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Davis. It's been properly moved and second to approve 19-128 by the chair, uh, Mr. Adams, Councilman Adams, and Councilman Davis's second. Do we have any additional comments or questions as relates to this item from council members? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it unanimously. This item has been approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We'll move You're on welcome. to item C. Mm -hmm. Hold a public hearing and consider a request to enact sub subsection 3.07C3 of the Unified Development Code to require a written or graphic plan for all land zoned to PRD, Plan Residential District, and to amend section 13.02 to clarify that group daycare home includes care for elderly adults. Mm -hmm. so Williams, do we have any additional information on behalf of the city? Okay. Again, this being a public hearing, is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against? Please come forward. Seeing none, we will close this portion of the public hearing. Is there any comment that the council or Madam Mayor may have concerning this item? Okay. Seeing none, I would make a motion then to approve. Thank you. I have a motion to approve from the chair. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much, Mr. Estes. So we have a motion to approve by the chair, Councilman Adams, and second by Councilman Estes to approve item 19-131. Um, are there any additional comments or questions from council members as it relates to this item? Thank you. Not seeing any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. This item is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have Welcome. one item, our last item, item D. Yes, sir. Hold a public hearing and consider a request for a change in zoning from PUD Planned Unit Development District to LI Light Industrial District for 382.391 acres off Summer Lake Road, off North River Road, and at 1451, 1500, 1501, and 1551 North River Road. Landlot 166, District 1, Section 5, Parcels 1, 2, 4, and 6. And in Landlot 172, District 1, Section 5, Parcels 11, 13, 14, and 15. And in Landlot 173, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 11, application by the City of Douglasville. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Uh, since we last met Thursday night, we have worked with uh, one of the property owners in the area. We did draft two different versions, mm -hmm. uh, keeping in mind that we wanted to pull uh, the stipulations and the uses forward. Uh, so at this time, we are asking uh, for approval of the item, if you do decide to approve it, that we include the new Manchester zoning approvals, which date back to, for the original, then we have 2004, 2005, 2008, 
2013 and, and 2014, we feel that that will satisfy some of the concerns that have um, come out of the discussion. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Is there anyone else here that would speak? This being a public hearing again, you'll have five minutes. <coughs> anyone to speak either for or against? And we would ask that there's someone here to speak in approval of or in support of, please come forward. If not, if there's anyone here with new information to speak against this item, please come forward. State your name and address for the record, and we'd love to hear from you. <clears throat> Good evening. How are you, Mr. Siegel? You already said my name. Now, do I still have to say it? I'd like for you to I'm say really it also. Here. Richard Siegel, 9905 Ashford Green Way. Happy yes, New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Mr. New Chairman, year. Madam Mayor, Good esteemed you, sir. honorable council members, with the information that uh, Ms. Williams just gave, I don't know whether to say I'm in favor of it or against it because I don't know what's included in there now. But I will go ahead and read the remarks as I have prepared them just in case uh, it doesn't meet what I, uh, I'm talking about. Sure. Um, so I stand before you in opposition in terms of what we already knew before today. Uh, I had to, I had planned to be here for your work session Thursday night, but I couldn't make it. I had to work late, but I did watch the video of the meeting. One thing I kept hearing is that nothing changes if this is changed from light and industrial under the PUD to light industrial outside of the PUD. And that's not accurate, and I'm gonna tell you why. When the tributary at New Manchester DCD was first created back in 2003, the area in question, this area that we're talking about, had a base zone of residential under the DCD. I believe they used R6 for all the residential to give them flexibility as to whether it's single family homes, apartments, or townhomes. Um, in 2008, this area was rezoned to light industrial. I call it light industrial with an asterisk because it's not the same light industrial as what was in the zoning uh, ordinance. Um, so it was zone, rezoned to light industrial with an asterisk under the DCD because the developer was planning on selling some of the land there to McMaster Carr, and there were other issues that would, made it not favorable for residential. Um, Georgia Transmission Corporation was planning on taking some land to build the substation that's now there, as well as put lines through there. The topography was not favorable to uh, residential. There's a lot of rock there. Isn't there? Yeah. Sorry, I know I'm not supposed to do that. Um, so, so that's why they, they rezoned it. Um, McMaster Carr ended up moving further down the road. They didn't actually buy there. Uh, but the remainder of the property that they weren't planning on selling to McMaster Carr was supposed to be like an office park, like you would see further down Riverside Parkway in Cobb County, closer to Six Flags. Uh, and because of that, um, the 2008 rezoning ordinance, which I have right here, it prohibits certain uses that would otherwise be permitted in light industrial. And it allows other uses that ordinarily would not be in light industrial. You'd see it in office institutional or general commercial. It was in essence creating a hybrid zoning arrangement that didn't otherwise exist in the city's voting, vote, uh, zoning laws because that's how DCDs work. And that's why I say light industrial with an asterisk. Um, so when McMaster Carr went further down the road all of the other provisions here in, in the 2008 rezoning ordinance still are in effect, uh, and they were not overridden by the adoption of the PUD. Uh, but if the rezoning before you now was adopted as is without any other conditions added, it would be all these conditions, all these permitted uses or not permitted uses would be overridden. Um, and those all of those were put in place to protect the residents along Riverside Parkway. Under the 2008 zoning ordinance, I counted no less than 40 industrial uses that are currently specifically prohibited under the uh, 2008 rezoning, uh, which would be allowed either by right or by uh, special land use permit if tonight's rezoning went through, it was approved as uh, it was originally brought forward. For example, motor freight truck terminal, that was prohibited. Just rezoning it to straight light industrial under the current PUD, uh, current uh, UDO would allow that. There is another 23 industrial uses that would require a special land use permit 
under the 2008 ordinance that would be permitted by right if this application is approved. And there are uses which, these uses were limited to protect the residents and tributary rather than nothing changing as you've been told, and I heard that several times Thursday night when I watched the video on, during that meeting, these protections would be stripped away and these in industrial uses would be allowed. I counted another 79 office institutional and general commercial uses that are currently allowed in this area um, under the 2008 ordinance that would not be permitted if this application is approved. These are uses that do not create truck traffic or noise pollution and therefore create less of a negative impact on traffic. For example, an accounting office or a bookstore. The 2008 ordinance also says that 35% of the site will be left undisturbed. This application would get rid of that and it would do whatever the UDO says about light industrial. The ordinance also says that no more than 25% of the total area will be devoted to the footprints of the buildings. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. The UDO would apply instead. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. Two more paragraphs. Thank you, Two Mr. more sentences. Siegel. Can I finish? I'll allow. Thank you. I appreciate you. Only because I know you. Also, <laughs> users targeted will involve no more than moderate truck traffic and less intensive truck traffic from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. I don't believe the UDO has that restriction on there. So there's a lot more in there. My suggestion is instead of doing the rezoning, just get the uh, uh, zoning determination letter from the city that the applicant, not the applicant, because the applicant for some reason is the city, that the landowners there can use in marketing the property instead of the PUD. You don't need to change the zoning if you have that zoning determination letter. Alternatively, you can amend the UDO to incorporate the 2008 rezoning so that you don't have to do the rezoning, just make sure the UDO clarifies everything that goes on. Thank you, Mr. That's Siegel. all I have to say about that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate you coming in. You're welcome. Anyone else that would speak in opposition to this item, please, with new information, please come forward. Do I have any time left? You have five minutes. Yes, sir. Kevin McGuire, 3252 Bakewell Street, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. I'm not speaking so much in opposition as probably maybe tabling this. Uh, it's been my experience speaking with the gentlemen who are trying to get this approved that I think the uh, issue is the website and trying to locate the information. It's been my experience from training, application, whatever, that you don't want to have somebody access your website and go more than three clicks to find what they're looking for. If a lot of this is, if the DCD zoning is buried in there, yeah, nobody's gonna wanna, you know, try digging for it. It's very frustrating, and even just me as a citizen going in and looking for other things, sometimes it can be, you give up and you just move on. So if, that, if there can be a link in the current zoning that ref goes back to, uh, the DCD and what all was involved, the previous uh, zoning back in 2008, I believe it was, that would be fantastic. I think that would alleviate a lot of problems, put a lot of the residents who are in the area, uh, alleviate a lot of their concerns. It's just, again, we have a very nice community and we work really hard to try to keep it uh, the way it is. So with that being said, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Still plenty of time. Anyone else that would like to speak concerning this item? Please come forward. Okay, before I close the public hearing, I will ask the council and mayor if they have any questions of the applicant or of anyone that may have spoken tonight. Seeing none, then I will close this portion of the public hearing and I have a question for staff. Uh, Ms. Williams, could you help us, please? And I know that I'm placing you on the spot here, but uh, most of the dates that uh, Mr. Siegel has provided and most of the dates that are in the documents for uh, this zoning and this development would uh, far preclude me being involved at all. So 
I know that there's a lot of items and a lot of uses that Mr. Siegel has mentioned that um, may or may not be in effect should this be, re should this be blanketly rezoned to IL or to LI. What is your feeling about the, uh, the ordinances of 2004, 2005, 2008 that we had discussed that, that did cover those qualifications? Uh, how would we be able to protect the community, to make sure that uh, the same protections that exist now would, be, would still be in existence should it be rezoned? That's my concern, and I believe the concern of many people that are here tonight. I think uh, what, I, what we suggested as far as the adoption of this clause will, um, protect, the, will protect the community. Uh, it would include all the zonings that have taken place over the course of the past 15, 20 years. Uh, we, we have the new Manchester, the original is included in this, um, in this verbiage, along with 2000, like I said, 2004, 5, 8, 13, 14. We wanted to make sure, and the reason why it's written that way is that we, wanted, we didn't want to leave anything out. Uh, because we do know it's a lot of information out there, so that's why the verbiage is written that way to make sure that everything is included as we move forward. So the verbiage then that I have been given that I had just mentioned in, in referring to those zoning ordinances and those um, changes and amendments would cover the concerns and would not allow for these uses that had been prohibited or for the uses that had been allowed that would be prohibited in rezoning none of that would be allowed according to these amendments is that correct correct okay any other questions or comment yes uh madam mayor go ahead I, I do mr chairman so in your motion um i haven't made a motion i know i was just thinking because it isn't written will we have to have a special stipulation I'll be reading it. okay never mind you're going to cover it okay okay any other question or comment okay all right so Having heard the information, having, having had Mr. Siegel come in and speak with us, and we appreciate your comments, sir. Appreciate you being back with us tonight. Um, I do have a question for the applicant. Would you please come forward? And if you would, give us your name and address for the record. I know that most people that are here tonight concerning this know who you are and what you are, what you're attempting to do. Um, just want to just want to ask a question. I know that, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Councilman. I'm uh, Scott Peters, professional address, 1100 Peachtree Street in Atlanta. Thank you, Mr. Peters. And you are here on behalf of? I represent Rooker. Okay. Who's one of the large property owners out there. I know that in the discussions that we've had and the meetings that we have attended uh, in the requests that you all have made to the city that you had mentioned that you did not have a user, you did not have anyone that at present was wanting to come in, and basically your reason for wanting this uh, wholesale change, so to speak, was to simplify and to align the uses with what is already there. Correct. Okay. The, the intent is with the adoption of the UDO, the DCD went away, and now we have this PUD that has certain components that are inconsistent with the DCD that was approved. It is our intent that nothing changed from the DCD other than the label. And I believe, and I know uh, Mr. Siegel didn't see this beforehand, but the intent with this proposal that is before you is to adopt the conditions that apply to the business industrial property from every one of those previous zonings applicable to tributary New Manchester. So anything that was applicable before is incorporated by what's proposed in front of you and, and working with staff. That was the intent is to make sure that nothing is changing by this. From the from the underlying conditions of zoning beyond what's stated. Okay, and from the standpoint of the community and, and what uh, the both gentlemen have mentioned, um, we want to make sure with respect to them that they are protected, that those uh, items that have been placed uh, have been put in place through the zoning ordinances and the amendments would remain. And so uh, obviously you would have several instances where hopefully you would be coming before us with development plans or with. Uh, hopes plans to, to do things on that 382 acres so as long as everyone understands staff has assured me that uh, this will cover and protect the community uh, we've had several discussions about it now I'm going to make a motion oh, first of all are there any other questions of the applicant just as clarification please uh, mr. yes okay no one out okay I'm going to make a motion to approve 
with the stipulation, I'm going to read this at, and I want it to be included as a part of the motion. So I make a motion to approve. And these terms are applicable to business light industrial property as set forth in the New Manchester approvals, zoning approvals, as originally approved by Ordinance 0-2004-55 and as they are amended by Ordinances 0-2005-17, 0-2008-16, 0-2009-20, and solely as it relates to parcel number 17201-50011 as further amended by amendment 0-213-37, 0-213-38, and R-2014-13. Um, and this is information that's been provided by our city attorney in order to place those protections, to continue those protections for the community. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. I have a motion from the chair with those special stipulations that were read for him by our presented to us by our assistant city attorney and our city attorney. Um, do I have a second to approve this motion? Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second. Uh, moved by the chair and second by Councilmember Estes to approve um, item 19-305 with the special stipulations as read by the chair. Are there any additional questions or comments from council members as it relates to this item? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. This item is unanimously approved. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all that we have tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have one item this evening, and that is to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Donaldson Architects, LLC, um, for services for the Douglasville Police Department shop expansion project. I know we spoke about this earlier and last week. Were there any more questions mm -hmm. concerning this or concerns? Nothing. In that case, I make a move that we approve this. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much. We had hearty seconds coming, so we have a motion to approve and a second from Councilmember Adams for 19-332. Um, and we did ask questions in committee and last week, and Captain Denning was um, gracious enough to help us with those concerns that we had. So in light of that, are there any more questions or comments as it relates to this item from council members? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. This item is unanimously approved. Is that all you have, Madam Chair? And that's all we have this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll move on to item 14, which is Public Relations Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no new business for the Public Relations Committee this evening. Thank you so much, Councilman Estes. We'll move on to Public Safety Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. At this time, no business at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Uh, 16 is Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight. Mm -hmm. It's item 19-325. It's authorized the mayor to sign a professional service agreement with uh, Croy Engineering LLC for planning services for the North Side Trail Plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we discuss this tonight in committees and I'd just like to ask if there's any questions or comments before going forward yes madam mayor okay thank you so much councilmember Burdale I'm just excited about the trail um, and we did have a presentation by Croy in committees and it was exciting to see all those things and hopefully that um, we'll be including inclusive of some of the historic markers that councilmember uh, Dr. Burdanley said, and um, and that everything in the timeline would not conflict with the um, realignment for Highway 92. Just really, I'm um, excited to see some things moving and and the bicycles, as not you're saying, not the boots on the ground, but the the tires of the bikes on the ground and foot traffic. So that's all I had. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Burdanley. Yes, thank you, um, Chairman Watts. Just to echo what the um, our mayor stated. Very excited. This is the ward where I serve with um, Councilman Davis. And the presentation that we had in our committee meeting at 5 from Croy Engineering, just a little bit of highlights, is that the timeline is um, from December up through August and that there will be some public input during this um, time as well. So that's always really good for our public to give their um, comments. Also, there is um, 
this is an ongoing prog process that we have had a lot of time to think about and put a lot of energy into it. I see that we have um, some New Horizons individuals here that are here in support of this item. And also, this process is also a, a start and stop. So it's not something that's just gonna happen overnight. This is to connect our parks together. So we're really excited about this happening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Burdanley. Um, anybody else? All right, thank you. Well, I'd like to put this in a one more motion to approve item 19-325. Thank you so much. Councilman Watts, we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been probably moved in second to approve item 19-325 from the chair and seconded by Councilmember Davis. Any additional questions or comments as it relates to this item? Thank you, not seeing any. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. This um, item is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all we had tonight under uh, recreation, culture, and tourism. I know we had to remember from Parks and Recreation how new titles. Thank you so much, Coach. We'll move on to item 17, which is Technology Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Technology Committee at this time. Thank you, sir. We'll move on then to item 18, which is Transportation Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Dr. LaShawn Verdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item under Transportation. Mm -hmm. That item is to authorize the Mayor to sign a construction service agreement with Wilburn Engineering LLC for installation of speed humps and warning signs on Warren Drive. I'd like to also note that um, Hollis Street is a part of this. However, Ho Hollis Street will have to have resurfacing and then we'll add the speed humps as well. So we do have the, um, our residents came together and this is something that they wanted um, as a chairperson. And I know other council members did have some concerns in regards to the pricing. The great thing about these speed humps is that they can be taken up and moved. So that's awesome. So I'd like to ask, are there any comments or questions in regards to this item? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I did have one comment in it, and that was that we did ask our engineer to help us uh, with a, a warranty or, and a, how long that uh, these speed humps were projected to last. And because of the, the type of material that they are, the, that is more durable with the rubber and you can adhere them or take them and put them somewhere else, they last from eight to 10 years. So that was a question that was brought up from council members. I'm not certain, I can't remember who asked the question, but it's eight to 10 year life, uh, lifespan for the speed humps. And thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item number 19-340. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second, uh, moved by the chair and seconded by Council Member Davis to approve 19-340. Any additional comments or questions as it relates to this item? No? Thank you so much. All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Item 19-340 is approved unanimously. Thank you, Madam Mayor. No other business. You're welcome. Under other business for number 19, I do have a presentation by myself, a letter of recognition and congratula uh, congratulatory letter honoring the Douglasville Tiger Cubs, the winning Douglasville Tiger Cubs, I'll say. Woo! <laughs> The Tiger Cubs uh, won the Super Bowl tournament for youth recreational football, and I will read. Uh, coach Jones, please come forward. Let's give him a hand as he comes. That's a winning coach right there. I will read this letter to Coach Jones, and we'll ask you to give your name and address for the record and then make a comment, and then we'll have the Tiger Cubs come down and take a picture with uh, the entire council. We're so excited for you. It says, Office of the Mayor, Rochelle Robinson, I wish to congratulate you, Coach Jones, and the Tiger Cubs on the winning Super Bowl of 2019 youth recreational football season. The Douglasville Tiger Cubs organization has been a fantastic partner for this community for so many years. I can't say, we were all trying to figure out how many years, but it's been so many, do you know? Oh, well, I did a little research. Well, first of all, Charles Jones, uh, okay. 7764 uh, Melanie Drive, Douglasville, Georgia. Um, I did a little research and I know I talked to Kurt Gables mm -hmm. in 1964. Are you serious? Somewhere, yes, somewhere wow. around in 1964, uh, Hunter Park, 
mm-hmm. uh, the Douglas Foot Tiger Cubs. And actually, uh, Kurt Gable's dad was probably one of the first ones that was coaching at the program. Really, 196, they're older than, older than me? No, okay, so we'll keep on reading. Um, for partner for this community for so many years, next time we're gonna have, because I know you'll come back, so next year we're gonna have the years in there. Um, there has been so many quality young people that have been developed in essential skills that they practice throughout their lives. I'm especially proud of this achievement because it follows such a successful 2018 season. The amount of teamwork and dedication shown by the coaching staff and all the players, parents, and everyone involved cannot be overstated. Again, congratulations on this accomplishment. I look forward to watching your staff continue to teach our young people these invaluable lessons. I also look forward to watching the Tiger Cubs grow into young men of strong character. Keep up the great work. Respectfully yours, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville. Let's give the Tiger Cubs a hand. All right, Coach Jones, you want to say anything before we come around and take well, a picture? On, on behalf of the Douglasville Tight Cubs, I would like to thank my parents, my coaches, and the kids. Because if it wasn't for the parents getting the kids to practice back and forth, yes, sir. it wouldn't be a Tiger Cub. And I'd like to thank the city of Douglasville for letting us have a place to practice, uh, for providing us a place to practice and play. And I'd just like to thank you guys for all you do. And uh, thank you for your um, donation for his uh, sponsor from the child, you and uh, Miss Dantley. I'd like to really appreciate you guys for taking care of our Douglas for Tiger Cubs. Oh, thank you so much, Coach Jones. Coach Jones, thank you all, and we'll thank all the Tiger Cubs, the participants, parents, and coaches. I know that um, Jesse Davis Park is under construction. It's been for a long time. We really appreciate your patience with parking and all of those things and the ice maker and all kinds of issues. So I know it's, I know it's too much, but it's, it's coming together. This year is our year of um, completion. And so we are excited about that. And we really, really appreciate your patience. We apologize for the inconvenience, but we're under construction to have something that's gonna be greater. So thank you for your, uh, your patience and congratulations on all of those obstacles. You're still winners and you still win every time. So we are really, really proud of you. Congratulations. Please come around so we can take a picture. And that's uh, my 11-year-old team and 12-year-old team, the 11-year-old D1 team and the 12 D1 team. So it's wow. two separate teams, separate and they did teams. a great job. All right. Madam Mayor, could, could, we have the, could we have the record of those two teams, Mr. Jones? Uh, the uh, 12 year olds went nine and two. They started off a little rocky. They, actually, they started off 0 and two. But we had a lot of you know, different pieces slowly but surely came. And you know, it was counting us out. But we knew once we got everything rocking and rolling, we was going to take care of it. <laughs> and my 11 uh, year olds, they went 10 and, 10 and two. Wow. 10, 10 and two. two. So, um, hey, I'm very proud of them. Outstanding. Congratulations.
started. something for a few weeks so I don't know what's going on with him I have to ask I think he had some cataract surgery or something done like probably 35 years or something crazy no he's a judge too mm -hmm. he's a judge this is probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he still wants to. You know, we can talk about that. All righty. That's something to celebrate. That's a long time to have a winning uh, reputation. We'll move on now to updates from city staff. From our legal department, uh, we have Ms. Assistant City um, Manager, Ms. Chelsea Jackson, we have anything from the legal department? No, ma'am, I don't. Thank you so much. A chief of police, uh, we have Captain Denning. I know that Chief Sparks at the FBI Academy. So we have anything from the police department? Uh, no, ma'am. Just a reminder of our uh, town hall tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. What time does this start? It starts at 6.30. 6.30. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Town hall tomorrow evening at 6.30 at the PD's community room, correct? All right. Thank you so much. Uh, city manager, Ms. Marsha Hampton. Yes, ma'am, we got a short week. We'll be right here on Thursday night again. So just to remind you all. We got council Thursday coming up. Yes, ma'am, we do. Yes. I don't know yep. if that's on my calendar. <laughs> you have a special event starting before council meeting and we start here at five o'clock again. And then you have a holiday on Monday and your meeting will be um, on the 21st. Uh, due to um, the crazy weather conditions today, we have rescheduled the groundbreaking for I-20 and Fairburn Road to Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., same location. So I know some of you have already indicated that you may not be able to make it. Um, the area was just saturated with water today, so we couldn't make it work. Um, and last thing I'll say is go Tigers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, city manager. Did, Madam Mayor, did she say go Tigers? I don't, uh, she was talking about the, the Douglasville Tiger Cubs. Which Tigers? He was talking. Which is <laughs> talking tiger. about the tiger cubs. Oh. Okay. Read my lips. Oh my god. The purple tigers or the orange tigers? <laughs> okay, tiger we, cubs. we'll move on before we have an uh, outbreak in the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Without any council business. But thank you so much, uh, city manager. And um, we have any other staff reports? Staff, we don't have anything. Comments from citizens and delegates. This is a portion of the meeting. If you'd like to uh, bring comments, you are welcome to come to the podium and you have five minutes. Give us your name and address for the record and then you can address myself and council members. Thank you, we don't have any. I will say that uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you're gonna have an opportunity to run the council meeting on the 21st. I am leaving that evening to go to the um, US Mayor's Conference in Washington, DC. So I'll be there and then leave from there and go straight to City Summit. So um, you're going to have a great time. So I'm sure you're going to do a great job. Yes, sir. Any other business to come up for council this evening? Thank you. Not seeing any, then this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>